Former Speaker of the House John Boehner retired from public office nearly six years ago, but in his new book, On the House, a Washington memoir, Boehner takes his party to task. His book traces his rise from his early life to becoming one of the most powerful figures in government. And he takes aim at his Republican former colleagues, as you can hear in these excerpts from the audiobook. I don't think Ronald Reagan would recognize the Republican Party today. And he sure as hell couldn't get elected in it. As a matter of fact, Reagan would be the most left-wing candidate in the GOP these days by a mile. I was living in crazy town now, and when I took the speaker's gavel in 2011, two years into the Obama presidency, I became its mayor. Crazy town was populated by jackasses and media hounds and some normal citizens as baffled as I was about how we got trapped inside the city walls. Under the new rules of crazy town, I may have been speaker, but I didn't hold all the power. By 2013, the Chaos Caucus in the House have built up their own power base thanks to fawning right-wing media and outrage-driven fundraising. And now they had a new lunatic leading the way who wasn't even a House member. There is nothing more dangerous than a reckless asshole who thinks he's smarter than everyone else. Ladies and gentlemen, meet Ted Cruz. Trump incited the bloody insurrection for nothing more than selfish reasons, perpetuated by the bullshit he'd been shoveling since he lost a fair election the previous November. The legislative terrorism that I'd witnessed as Speaker had now encouraged actual terrorism. And it pissed me off. Former Speaker Boehner joins us now. Good morning to you, Mr. Speaker. It's good to see you with the blue eyes. You tell a great nice story in the book. You tell a great story in the book about Colonel Gaddafi giving you sunglasses because he said in the desert because he said the desert is not kind to blue eyes. But we really wanted to see your eyes this morning because some of your stuff is jaw dropping. So let's get to it. We should be we should we should acknowledge that you take aim at Republicans. You take aim at Democrats. You also take aim at yourself with this. A lot has changed in Washington, you say, in the world, but you have not. You are still the same jackass that you were 25 years ago. That's how you start. <laughs> now you seem to be calling out a lot of fellow beeps. And so I'm wondering what you're hoping to accomplish with your book. Let's start with that. Uh, listen, I wasn't trying to accomplish anything other than to tell my story. I've had a pretty interesting life, a very interesting career, uh, and I thought it would be a good read for the American people, and so I decided I'd write a book. Uh, it was a great uh, exercise, a great project, and uh, I'm glad people are finding it interesting. Oh, it's more than interesting. I want to talk about you and Ted Cruz in particular because you take really big shots at him. You, you guys won't be having a glass of wine anytime soon. <laughs> what, what bugs you about him specifically? And, and it's more than just him. Well, well, this guy wasn't even a member of the United States House of Representatives. He was a member of the Senate. Uh, stirring up uh, some of the crazies in my own caucus uh, to, uh, uh, to cause all kinds of problems. And that's uh, probably why I zeroed in on him, probably the only person in this book, uh, in the way that I did. Uh, it, as I say in the book, there's nothing worse than a reckless jackass who thinks he's smarter than everybody else. Yeah, he said he's one of these guys who knows all of the answers, and we all know somebody like that. Well, we sure do. Mm -hmm. You say uh, in the book, uh, Mr. Speaker, that in today's GOP there are Trump Republicans and traditional Republicans, but the Trump Republicans are clearly in control of the party right now, a and I'm wondering if you still feel at home in the Republican Party. Listen, I'm a Republican. I'm through and through. I believe in, uh, in spending within your means. I believe in a strong national defense. Uh, I'm a Republican. Uh, but we've got some people in the party who, who believe more in making noise uh, than they do in making policy. Uh, I went to Washington to serve in the Congress, uh, not because I wanted to make noise, but because I wanted to do something on behalf of our country. Uh, and I think if Republicans begin to focus more in on the policies uh, that uh, we all believe in, uh, we can unite the party. Uh, in a place that, uh, that Americans will recognize once again. Well, Mr. Speaker, let me pick up on that point in particular, because in the book you do a very clear job of explaining how technology changed and that allowed politicians to go straight to the public. Uh, but you don't really take on the subject of why that outrage and that fight for fight's sake resonated with so many people. I mean, one theory of it is that for half the country, America is just changing too quickly for them to tolerate it. Is that how you see it? 
Well, I don't get into uh, why the crazies are the crazies, uh, but I do run into them while I was in Congress and clearly since then. Uh, and some people have got a rather sour view of uh, the United States. Listen, we're a great country, we're a large, diverse country, and we ought to embrace that. It's been great for our country over the last 240 years, and it'll be great for the next 240 years if we embrace the fact that we're, we're large, we're complex, uh, we're very diverse. Let's put our arms around it and believe in it. Yeah, you know, you talk a lot about uh the, diver the lack of diversity in the party. You hit on that, but you talk about the lack of disrespect. In particular, you say about Nancy Pelosi. I don't agree with much, much of what she says, but I do respect her. And that seems to be what's missing today. There doesn't seem to be respect, and there doesn't seem to be tolerance on either side. You say there's a difference between common ground and compromise. So how do we get things back on track? Because it is so often the ditch on both sides of the aisle, really, when you look at it. Well, again, but Republicans seem to have bar, a special. I learned the Republicans seem to have a special, uh, a special ledge on this particular topic, though. Go ahead. Well, growing up on my dad's bar, I learned the art of being able to disagree without being disagreeable. Uh, and uh, the people in politics that I served with, a lot of them I disagreed with, uh, but that didn't mean I had to be disagreeable. Uh, I've got uh, as many Democrat friends as we got Republican friends. Uh, you can do this job and respect the people on the other side who happen to have different views. This is not rocket science. And when it comes to governing, uh, it's about finding common ground. Uh, we're not always going to agree on everything, but the question is, where can we agree? Where can we come together and to do what needs to be done uh, to help the American people in their quest uh, for the American dream and a better society? Who's the leader of the Republican Party now? Well, there's a lot of leaders in the Republican Party, just like when I was there. You know, Mitch McConnell plays a role, Kevin McCarthy plays a role. Uh, but clearly, former President Trump is retired, unemployed, uh, and appears to want to play some type of a role. Well, over the weekend, Mr. Speaker, uh, former President Trump uh, called Mitch McConnell a dumb SOB, reportedly, for accepting the election results. What, what, do, you think, what do you think rhetoric like that does to the Republican Party? Well, I, I think rhetoric uh, that inflames people is wrong. I don't care whether it's from the right or from the left. Uh, it just doesn't help our country in any way, shape, or form. Uh, and so Republicans need to go back to being the principles of the, as a Republican, of principles of the Republican Party. And frankly, uh, I think the party will be much, much better off in the long run. All right, you watch golf over the weekend. What do you think about the results? Happy? But listen, for the last 48 years, I've planted myself uh, every Masters weekend. I've watched every moment of it. And uh, I'm real proud of Hideki Matsuyama for his accomplishments. He played great. It was, uh, it's always great theater, but it was just as great yesterday. All right, John Boehner, you say you went from a regular guy working to a bar to holding a pretty good job, pretty big <laughs> job. I want to end with this, my favorite Bainerism, no need to murder your opponent when they're committing suicide. <laughs> Thank you very much, John Boehner. The name of the book on the house, I'm showing it, goes on sale tomorrow.